GM. Maybe go and see someone. Okay, let's start off and hopefully start off just by playing some good chess. That's all I want to do today. I'm going to start off with an English opening. We're playing title Tuesday, 11 rounds. I'm not going to explain it all again. Um, you should know what this tournament's about. I've been playing it for about five years now. The chess.com title Tuesday competition. Bloody good competition. And I'm just trying to think what you're supposed to do against this. This is one move where my fear... Again, I, I always get like theoretical lines which I don't know as well as I should do. This is in a chessboard course that I've done, but I've never faced it over the board. And I, I know you play this at some moment, but this is, I think, all theory. Do I go here now or do I play e3? Just trying to remember stuff. Um, where does the knight go? Here or here? I, oh, God. It's annoying when your memory is as bad as mine. I'm going to go here. A little bit worried about f2. So, um, and I have to play e, oh, I can play knight here, but then this move scares me. I'm getting myself in a bit of a kerfaffle. That's another brilliant word, kerfaffle. There's a, at the moment, the, the world word championships going on and my favorite word, discombobulate, is up there doing very well. It's in the quarterfinals. So go and check my Twitter out if you want to vote on that. But kerfaffle, that's a good word as well, isn't it? That's a good English word. Kerfaffle. Well, it's the English opening, this. It's not It's not a new opening, but I, I because I haven't had much experience in this particular variation, and this kind of move scares me as well, I'm kerfaffling the opening up a little bit. Uh, and I don't necessarily like the way I played this. I don't like giving my opponent this big center, so I want to play this or this quickly, but bishop g4 is scaring me quite a lot, so I, I've I've uh, I, I've lacking a bit of space here. I feel, I wonder where my, my I got out of theory. I feel knight c2 wasn't the right word. Yes, this knight coming in is a bit scary. So I'm gonna, do I take here first, then the knight comes in. If I go here, he takes, takes, and the knight comes in, and he wins a pawn. Okay. I'm going to take here and hope he takes back quickly. Maybe here I have to grab this pawn and allow a check on d3. But I get an extra pawn. And now I'm just hoping to stop this knight coming in. And if he exchanges, I get rid of his very dangerous pawn. And we got like a French defense then, which is okay. But I will have to check out this opening. A little bit of a word of advice. You know, if you guys play Blitz, it's so easy to play game and game of Blitz. But if you really want to get better, if you ever get, you know, if the opening doesn't go your way in a Blitz game, make sure you check it afterwards. Uh, I'd recommend the website. Obviously, I would because I've, you know, kind of made the website of a friend, gchess.com. But even, you know, chess.com, just check out where you went wrong, you know? So, uh,. Remember your Christmas hat. It makes you almost unbeatable. You're not. You're not wrong there, aren't you, Sauron? Um, I might have to go and grab the Christmas hat for Christmas power because I was playing a bit of Blitz the other day. I think it was more that you know when you're not in a tournament, you relax a little bit, and it was working bloody well. So I might have to go and get that. Okay. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm a bit happier about my position now because there's going to be no quick disasters. If he takes here rook b1, I can see his pieces are coming around this way, but I don't exactly know what they're doing. Now I was hoping to come in here, but then maybe queen here is, is a little bit annoying. Still not an amazing position for me. Not sure that was really necessary. I maybe should have put the knight over there when I had a chance because I could be worse on the queen side because this square is very weak. I mean, he can try to get a rook in that square. And I'm a little bit cramped still, but it's also pretty solid, right? I mean, I, I'm making a bit of progress over here. My bishop can come here to d2, which I probably have to play now. And it's okay. 
nothing. It's not amazing by any means, but he's, he's very slow, isn't he? I don't normally meet players who are slower than me, but this guy is slow. And now he's sacrificed, where he might get a bit of compensation, but I, I, it is, you shouldn't really sacrifice and make it extremely unclear when you've got a good position there's no there's no need to i mean i love sacrificing but if you've got a simple solution you don't need to uh you don't need to make the position messy and it seems to me like his sacrifice not really worked very well and now i've got this move coming and because i've got the extra rook i'm going to be taking over the file the time control is three minute plus uh one second a move uh Again, the opening didn't go very well there. I've been struggling a bit in the openings, but we managed to keep it just about together. So I'm just going to have a look now. Uh, let's have a look and try to remind myself where I went wrong. Now, this is all theory, but I think here... Okay, knight c2 is the computer's best move, but is it putting the knight on e3? Maybe that's what I should be doing. I've got to look at this position again. What do, I can't remember. Maybe you guys can help me out. Uh, what's what is the book move here? I, I mean, I, I did a course on this for chessboard, but you know, some lines I know very well, but some lines again, you know, keeping the remembering all the lines that you do in a chessboard course when you're teaching them is quite hard. And this is one line which I I, I need to check. So um, you can check the book. How do we check the book? I mean, that, sound, that sounds all very good, Celebi. But what button do I press? There's a lot of buttons around here. What button do I press? Is there a button that's a book button? What looks like a book? Add to library, classroom. I don't know what the book button is. I don't know. Where's the book button? I don't know where the book button is. It's giving me dilemma. It, it may be, maybe Night B3 makes more sense, Peter. Hello, Peter, or Peter, I say. To the right of the English opening. Okay, where's that? There, ah, okay. Wow, look at this. I've clearly used this a lot of times, haven't I? Okay, this is quite a cool feature, isn't it? All right, let's see, okay. Yes, I know it's the English opening, but tell me what I should do. So, oh, knight d4, yes, okay. Oh, come on, queen b6. Knight b3, it is knight b3. I was about to say, actually, that knight b3 makes a lot more sense here. In the game, I put the knight on c2, but it's not a very good square. I wanted to come here, but why do I want to do that? Because now after bishop here, you know, it's a little bit annoying. So knight, knight b3 is the move to remember. And I know that I have to play d3 in order to get an advantage. I know that d3, at some point, is the move to play because you, you don't want this pawn to remain there you, you, you want to kick that pawn away so d3 so knight b3 that's the way i'll play this in future and obviously i will have a look at this in a bit more uh a bit more depth when um when i can what is another good site i mean you guys you guys seen gchess.com you can also use this site this would be this is the site that i created where well i say created it was my idea but this has got the most in-depth um, analysis out there. And you can see the position changes each move. And this will show you lots of different resources. Chess publishing, great. Make sure the game hasn't started the next one. And let's have a look at what articles we've got. And I'll go to chess publishing. Oh, I've got to log in. I can't bother to do that now. But I'll have a look at it on G Chess later on. I better close that down, otherwise chess.com might might think I'm cheating if I have G Chess open at the same time. Oh god, and I don't want to be banded by that bunch of misfits, do I? The cheaters of the world. Oh no, no. Hello, Oliver. H how you doing? Uh, Oliver's been. I keep saying that every time I see Oliver in the chat, but Oliver has been subscribed to my Twitch channel for what five years. You crazy man, Oliver. <laughs> I think I, I believe it or not, I've been I have been streaming on Twitch for at least five years. My chess exploits. You can check out my YouTube channel as well if you want to. There's some good shit over there as well. Um, 
that was everyone's holiday anyway before before the next game comes so we won our first one i'll just show you who's playing by the way i mean the world blitz and rapid championships is going on but that doesn't mean this is not strong i mean you look you know you've got ali razor at the start at the top you have to be a title player to play gm i am you know, woman gm woman i am fide master uh you know you have to be you have to be you have to have got a title at some point to play in this so it's, it's a really strong tournament and um okay well we're in we're in with the next game and we're playing benjamin bock and we got white again let's go for the english again let's see what happens benjamin very strong blitz player and benjamin is obviously also uh, a very good streamer um so we're gonna i mean i could play very dryly and take here but let's let's keep it a bit more interesting and we're going to go for the sharp this very sharp variation um where i gambit to pawn but i basically try to make it a little bit difficult for black to castle his king because the king is going to be a little bit weak either way it goes because of these two pawn moves opening up the king and this is an old variation i used to play the knight generally comes to this square behind a pawn so it can come into these two squares at the correct moment and i like this kind of structure for me here normally because uh, my king is very safe when it castles kingside uh, i've got my bodyguards those three pawns uh, behind it and yeah i'm a pawn down but i i, I I, I don't mind about I'm not I'm not I don't mind about being a little bit material down it's part of the fun isn't it part of the fun being a pawn pawn or so down I try to convince myself when I go into an ending and lose because I'm a pawn down so um we're gonna uh get the king castled and then we're gonna think about what to do next that's generally what I do now I've got all my pieces developed I like I like I like getting tactical really only when I've got a bit of king security and good development so after my next move we can we can think about how to attack and it kind of depends where his king goes if he goes this way i've got moves like h4 opening him up generally black goes this way because he's got four pawns guarding it and then you have to try to find a way through those pawns uh in uh in in general sense so um okay so he's pushed here now can i just take that pawn um or do we take this pawn let me just have a think here take on b5 take on c3 take on c3 takes here very interesting bishop f3 coming or do i take on c5 um okay i'm gonna take this one might lose i might lose on g2 but whose king is going to be weaker it's getting quite interesting here. i have to take my knight because my knight's on pre and now i can castle i can play a move like this i can play this as well it's, it's getting very tactical here it's a lot of moves to consider in this in this position taking bishop f3 or d5 castling he takes 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 here don't like that he's about to take here so i need to play either bishop no i need to play d5 probably yeah but then this one comes and then i have to take on e6 okay let's then he takes let's go for this risky mook as i'm going to lose another pawn I'm hoping I got e6 at the opportune moment to to open his king up. I think he's got to take my rook to divert my queen away now because my queen is nicely positioned here. Now, if he does take my rook, uh, I will have to obviously move my queen to the side of the board like this. I don't like these pre-moves. It often goes wrong. My idea is at some point if he takes, I play e6, he takes... And maybe I move his king, but he's got a, a very scary pawn, pawn majority, where when that sequence of moves occurs. 
Um, but again, I feel my king is safer, yeah? I mean, I, I'm one move away from castling, so it doesn't matter if I'm like 20 pawns down if I checkmate him. Who, who cares, eh? It doesn't matter. I, you can have my 20 pawns, and I raise you a checkmate, my friend. So we're, go, we're going... Uh, we're going to go for this. But I, I really think he probably has to play something like this. I haven't really worked this out. I, I, I'm, my calculation is I, I feel not particularly strong compared to players like Benjamin. Um, now I have to take here now, I think. Um, and open, open up the position still. Okay, so now if I take here... Or do I take the knight? Or do I do I simply ignore? I have to. Okay, I'm going to ignore. Keep keep some possibilities open to me. Okay, now this looks really scary for my opponent. I I would assume, but uh, he is getting quite near castling. Now this one and gi giving the piece and going for the attack floats my boat, but. I think I should just uh, go here and just castle. Let's not go for any heroics as of yet. The problem with this line is he, he, he is, as we're going to see, castle himself. Unless we can discombobulate him. So I'm trying to discombobulate by giving myself some check here. Is this move also a possibility in, in this position? Or do we just simply take some things off? Check, bishop here. Don't see how this is helping me. I mean, do we go here? But then queen takes. So I think I should keep it simple for the time being. And now he's trying to get a bit of play himself. Okay. I'm getting short of time. I'm very bad short of time. This is this is one of the issues that I have. Oh. And I don't like the way I've done this. Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, such a good position on a play like that. Sorry, man. It's so annoying. I've just had so many good possibilities there. And you just fall apart like that. It's very frustrating. So, all right. Sorry, I should resign first anyway. But that was really bad. That was really bad. Okay. Oh, sorry. I, why can't I resign there? That was annoying. So that was really frustrating because that should have been my game. But just falling for that cheapo at the end. And let's just see. It, it looked like there must be something really strong here. But I played it a bit too safe. So, okay. So frustrating. So maybe I can take on F7. Maybe, but taking on D7 is still an advantage. That was a very annoying loss there. Very annoyed. Very annoyed myself to lose in that way with a time advantage and an advantage on the clock. And this is all looking very good now. And now I, I, I played the computer. Well, one the computer's top choice, but I completely crumbled when my time was just getting a little bit low. So I'm basically a pawn up here with what should be a good position. And I started playing horrendously here. So, yeah, I mean, I, I should just keep the activity up, something like this. But h3 is not a bad move, but I just fell for this fell for this attack at the end. Well, I mean, obviously, Benjamin kept the pressure up there, but uh, very annoying. Uh, and here... This is where I could have done with a bit more time on the clock, but that's my own fault. And as you can see, there's a number of moves that should, should be very strong for me. But I didn't play them all. I, I, I saw this idea here, but I just missed the Queen E4 check. I thought, oh, I'll keep it, I'll keep it safe. I'll keep it safe and um, play it very safely and I'll be all right. But I just totally missed this move. So... What should I do? So rook d6 kind of makes a lot of sense. And then after this one, we play e6. And this is the killer move that's always going to be winning. And this would have probably won the game. But even before this, maybe, 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 I, should be, maybe I should be doing better somehow. Let's just have a look at this again. It feels like my position should be... I mean, again, this is maybe not the strongest of computers. It actually says just, just bishop f3. But okay, this move... 
And it thinks I'm in a lot of trouble here, funnily enough. So bishop f3. But okay, is this that bad? Knight takes, knight takes. And now he should just take and take here. But again, I don't know. I don't believe this computer here. Let's just have a look. So it takes d5. And this is all very normal. Now, what about the other move I, I wanted to play? What about if I take... Okay, we're, we're, we're into the next game. So I have to bounce back from that. Um, annoying, annoying loss, especially because of the time advantage I had there. Um, but well played to Benjamin. So okay, so let, let's let's go for a Sicilian, and we go for my favourite Sicilian, the Sicilian Dragon. So Knight F6, G6. We're into the Dragon, and I haven't played this move for a long time. This is called the Dragadorf, because it's a mix of the Nidorf and also the Dragon. And it's a very, very risky opening, but I don't mind taking a risk. And um, where it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a hybrid opening, and there's not really much theory on it. I, I remember I, I, I played this a long time ago against Shearoff. And now I'm trying to remember, uh, maybe, maybe Bishop G7 is okay. Hello Andy, is Yoda. How you doing? Hope you had a good Christmas, mate. And I hope everyone else who's watching had a good Christmas as well. And I don't know I don't know about this move because obviously here comes. And I'm gonna now play h5. And, and the point is I want this square for my knight. So I don't want to move this knight there. And the point is, had I gone knight there, he would have gone h4, then I go h5. When he goes g5, I wouldn't have had this square. And the reason I want this square is very simply that this is a plan. Getting this knight to this square is a plan that I very much like. And um, we get a very interesting position here. But I, I have to admit, this I have my I, I've had this a couple of times, this kind of plan. And there is there is something here that scares me. I'm always worried about saying the best plan in case my opponent's listening to me. It's basically like I'm playing in and I'm talking to him. Well, this is what you should be playing, just in case. Not that that often helps because it'll probably be uh, <laughs> I'll probably be basically telling him some crap moves. But there's one one plan here. Maybe I should have castled last move because had he moved his bishop, this would have been a lot stronger. And I mean, castling can't be bad. So let's let's do it now. This move strikes me as a little bit slow, a3, but it's still okay, it's still okay for him, certainly. And this is now a very interesting middle game, very intriguing middle game here. Um, I'm happy to get castled. This is actually a good pawn formation generally for me on the king side, because he can't break through. I need to defend this. And now I need to try and sacrifice this. So the plan I was worried about was f4, f5 a lot sooner. So rather than playing the slow a3, rather than playing this move, I was a bit more worried about this straight away. But this is still scary. And now I, I think I have to sacrifice. Um, and there's a couple of options here. Do I do I whip this one off or do I try and bring my queen into here? Very interesting position, as I, I hope you agree. Uh, now, I think I'm going to play my queen here. So I don't want to get hit by knight e6 if my queen goes here. And I want to get my queen into his position. There was this very, there was a game in the Nyadorf. Um, very famous game between Mosesian, I think it was Mosesian, um, who is an Armenian grandmaster with the white pieces, and Gary Kasparov. And it was very funny because Mosesian was rated 27-15 at the time in an all-play all-tournament, and Gary, before the game, just said, well, I shouldn't be playing this guy. He's just a chess tourist, not a real player. And he was like, he was one of the best, he was like, I think, number five in the world. And Gary Kasparov in that game, in a Nidorf, you can look up the game, maybe Blair can find it, um, went rook takes, e4, rook takes c3 uh, and played a similar idea. Now, the reason I did not take this pawn is because after bishop g2, I, I didn't see how it helped me, and, and pawns are not that significant at the moment. The most significant thing is checkmate. And I'm not sure how that would help me. Now I must take this one. And what is my opponent doing? He's trying to come here. Intriguing. But this looks like it could come and be powerful. And now I've got a couple of pawns, but my queen coming in looks correct thus far. 
because my queen wants to join in the attack. These two ideas hanging in the air. So let's go here. And where does my queen now head? I don't really want to be wet and play this move. But my queen doesn't have particularly great squares. Very complex scenario here. I'm going to keep it as near to his king as I can. And try to keep attacking him. Very interesting position. If he takes... Okay, so he, he, he's trying to defend everything. Now, I'm going to bring another piece into the attack. I'm not worried about material. Knight b3 is my big threat. Checkmate. Boom! That's more like it. And, uh, I mean, one of those games which is incredibly messy and... Uh, at some point, maybe my opponent is doing well, uh, but that's more like it. That's the kind of thing I should be doing in the last game. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, my friend. Well, I need to get like a really ornate pipe, like Gandalf smokes or something, and just, you know, just have it as a prop. Just prop it up. Prop it up. That's more like it. That's what we want to see. Now, that's round three. So we got one more round and then we, we have a little break. Um, so winning the next game is going to be very important. Now, I, I think by, by this stage of the game, if we just go and have a look at the uh, position, I'm doing very well. And the computer agrees I'm pretty much winning here because he has to play king d2. And a move like that is not going to work. And I've got a little tactic there as the computer shows. But um, the plan which he should play, and I know this, when you get this kind of position here, I think maybe I moved my knight to b6 a bit prematurely. The computer still thinks this is um, just a very interesting position. It's a very, very interesting opening than the Dragadorf, the Dragon Nyadorf. Put them together, you get the baby, a weird baby, the Dragadorf, Nyadorf's dragon. And as the computer shows, this is certainly the best plan, and he, and he shouldn't be wasting time when you've got these uh, when you've got these um, uh, positions. This this um, you have to you can't waste tempo. And the simple plan is to try and take here, and then if I use this pawn, there's a big hole on the e6 square, and, and this is. But I mean, again, this position I've got ways to counterattack. Um, so what I think is maybe a more accurate move order for me is the castle first because then if he goes here I remember Gwen Jones played this move funnily enough It's not on the computer's radar, but I remember this being an intriguing idea in some position. Maybe it doesn't work here though Maybe it doesn't work here. Okay, interesting And the way he played it a3 is just too slow if you're playing very aggressively and you know castling on opposite sides You, you shouldn't you should try to avoid playing slow moves, right? And um, now this is another slow move. He, he is preparing something there, but I just develop. And at last he plays this. But now after rook c8, I think my attack is really coming through. And you can see here that, yeah, rook takes c3 is practically winning for me. Now, what should I play in this position? Well, the computer says queen c7 is okay, but it does have my move queen c8 as one of the top choices. Because I didn't want to get, like I say, I didn't want to allow this to happen. And this position looks very good for me. My opponent went a little bit mental here. But after the queen comes in, I think my attack is just too much. Was there a stronger move then here? Funnily enough, I should take this one and then take on e4. Because he doesn't have bishop g2. But okay, I mean, that does look that does look quite good, it has to be said. But okay, my position is very good at this, this stage anyway very very nice at this stage um thank you the saints for uh gifting uh to the community that's good anything you want to support me with is, is great you know go and check out the ginger gem shop but you know you could you, you know all about the salesy thing let's, let's not even go there let's not even bother today can't bother i bet you've been in flux with sales things at this time of year let's not let's not try to sell anything Let's not. If you want to buy something, I know you will. Okay, right. Back to the board. 
and let's just have a look who's leading benjamin my opponent in round two won his third game as well that was disappointing that game but we can put that to the back of our mind and the next game is an important game because we win that one three out four in a very good position and we go into the second third of the tournament after a break cheers i'm still saving the ginger shot until the the perfect time we've moved on now to a cbd drink called trip take a trip with the ginger oh yeah um i mean it might look like uh, deadshot said my rucksack was a brilliant move what well, the thing is um you know i've been playing chess at, at competitive level for a long time and you do pick up a lot of knowledge and like i said this idea of rook takes c3 it was it was basically a game it was gary i mean it's a very common idea but there was this very famous game where gary kasparov played it in a nearly in a very similar position and and that's that's how you get better at chess right you you um you 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 ba you have to pick up ideas pick up the right way to play and then put them into action okay so we do have a big game here this guy's a very strong russian player uh timofev 2650 russian and i think we're going to get a dutch opening now because the, a lot of okay he's gone for the jabava london uh and cheeky bastard and he is he's gone for the jabava london believe it or not do can, can we i'm gonna i'm gonna play i'm gonna play i don't know bishop b4 is probably the main move here i mean it's funny how i'm doubting myself here i, I this move i'm gonna play i'm gonna play stonewall dutch just because i want to <laughs> and this little move kind of important but g4 is a very good move here which i didn't expect my strong opponent to play so it's going to get very murky now maybe he's played this before now if he takes e5 doesn't work so he's trying to opening up trying to open up multiple lines and we're getting a very complex scenario now and i don't want to open up lines over there so i'm feeling i should be keeping it closed because I've done the same kind of thing myself and got got in a lot of trouble when I've done that before. So let's just develop naturally for now. And looks like a very interesting position. My opponent is a bit better developed than me, which is which is a little bit scary. And I'm not sure where either of us are going to put our kings. Now I'm going to push that bishop away because that bishop is very scary there but this is the move that i have to watch out for so i want to get counterplay against this knight now with bishop b4 and i want to so he, i forced him to retreat so this is looking a little bit better and i have to be brave in such a position i know i'm lining up but my opponent's king may also feel some heat in this scenario now Am I playing this? I'm very happy that he's gone back. Now, or or do I just play this move here? Now, taking the knight kind of seems right, but this bishop could be very strong later on. Do I take and try to play e5? I think I need to take. I think I should take this one. Let's keep let's keep the tempo up. But what next? this move okay let's just go here and maybe try to play for e5 his dark square bishop does scare me because if it ever lands here for example there's problems but i will take that it comes there at the moment so he's breaking first so i really want to play this move e5 here takes here takes here takes my knight d3 looks interesting but interesting is not enough but his king is in the middle i feel this is the move that i, I should be playing okay i'm gonna play it because now if he takes i can also go knight takes bishop takes it and just play bishop e6 so he's gone here and i must take right now 
what next? Is there some sacrifice? Feels right to sacrifice and somehow, but how do we sacrifice? Because E5 is coming from him. I can't see it. Time is ticking. It's a problem that very intense, complex position. Knight D3, does it work? You've got to move, man. I can't make it work. So this is a sad move to play. Very sad move to play. Didn't want to play that move because I'm coming back. And now knight here. Yeah, this is this is just not what I wanted to do, this kind of malarkey, is it? Here, I have to keep coming forwards. It doesn't matter about the pawn. I've got bishop e6. I've got to play quicker. Yeah, this is the problem. I just missed, missed this one fucking chance, man. And this is... Again, I said when the bishop gets in, it's really bad, and I think my position's crumbled. Oh, dear. Very annoying. Bishop comes to g4. Everything's going wrong. And, yeah, I missed. A, I must have missed a chance there, right? So, uh, oh, that was frustrating again. Just, it felt like e5 was right. Let's go here. And again, not finding the critical move. So yeah, I do have a good position. Most annoying. And was queen e7 right? This is all okay. Queen a5 better, but queen e7 is good. And here, e5 is the correct move. So I'm playing this all right. And after this f4 move, I knew this was right, but I didn't find the right move. And this was a bad square for my knight. I totally missed his plan. How did he do it? Yeah, I played this too slow. So I had to come back here. But I spent all my time here. I've got a minute and 11 seconds. I spent all my time trying to make this nonsense work. And it just doesn't work. Uh, and the point is, after this, 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 I wanted to take here. And I wanted to try and generate an attack. But I saw queen e2. And I can't take the bishop. And this is maybe still playable maybe i should have gone for this but it's not quite working so i spent far too much time and i put my knight on a, s a silly square this is the other square i wanted to go to let's see how this could have gone and after here i just come back and my knight is of course much better here it's so easy seeing these things afterwards it's, it's incredible so much better here and again this would have given me a very very good game knight c6 and, and my position crumbled surprisingly quickly here uh okay knight d7 i thought this was a good way to go but the move that i really that really got me into the most trouble was bishop h4 and i just i, I put my queen on a very bad square yeah queen d7 i've I got to put it here but it's already got a bit wrong with this bishop coming in so not good. So I had to here put my knight back here to defend. So yeah, this is just, I mean, everything was going right, but I just uh, just went a bit wrong around uh, uh, around around this moment in the game, unfortunately. So e5 was correct. Just why, why not pressurize this pawn with a knight and put it in front of my king? Such a more, such a more natural move to play. And, and whose king is going to be weakest? I feel it's actually going to be White's king, because you know I, I, I'm already lined up. And okay, it looks like his pawns make a lot of progress, but he can't really maintain that center. And my knight comes here, so this 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 would be all right. So two rather two rather disappointing losses, and we have a little break now. Um, but uh, well, we'll have a look at Tom's scores. But we got to we got to try to do better than the rest rest of the rest of the competition now. Um, got to have a good second half of this. That was 50% after two rounds. Not happy with that. Let's see if we can um, bounce back in, in in the next part. Have a good middle section. It's annoying because I sort of felt felt like uh, I was sort of playing all right, but just missing missing some uh, missing some little bits of this. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. 
Right. Leading at the top. And you can see Benjamin is on four out of four. Good for him. So he must have won his last two rounds. Ali Razor has dropped half a point. We're only on two points. So like we do need a good second half. Uh, had some tough games, but you could at this level you only need to make one mistake. And the one mistake here was moving the knight to the wrong square. If it had gone the other way, it might have been a completely different scenario. But the knight going to g6 is, is not correct. Um, so let's have a good let's have a good next part to the tournament, shall we? Yeah, why not? Any games going on? Let's see if there's any games going on. I don't know how to find the the live games now. Don't know. I, I'm such a technophobe, even though I am streaming, so I really shouldn't be a technophobe. And chess.com um, after round four, so you know we're only fifty percent, but we're gonna we're gonna win the next couple of games, as Bon Jovi would say. You gotta keep the faith every mum's most favourite rock and roll star would, we, would you call Bon Jovi a rock and roll star I'm not sure if you would really would you a soft rock star I would say a soft rock star um, he's yeah like I say he's every mum's favourite rock and roll star right you know you know if you've got friends and their mum you know this is well, about, maybe about 15 years ago 20 years ago their mums would like Bon Jovi. He had lovely, they had lovely hair, didn't he? Lovely hair, Bon Jovi. Uh, he and Bruce Springsteen are the only thing my state has, unfortunately. Uh, well, my mate Blair in the chat is a big Bruce Springsteen fan. I'm not, I'm not a massive Bruce Springsteen fan, uh, Suki. Um, so be sensible, have a beer. So, I mean, Jay, do you, do, you, do you really think I'm capable of being sensible? I'm not very good at that. I'm not very good at being sensible. I'll give it a go one day in the next in the next life. In, the ne in, the, in my reincarnational stage, we will come back as a sensible man. God knows what kind of state the world will be in then. Do we really want to keep being reincarnated? I mean... I'm not saying reincarnation is real. I'm just saying if it was real, you know, I mean, it'd be pretty, it could get, I mean, pretty bad, right? Uh, what state is that anyway? I'm going off on one again. What state is that? So what state is Bon Jovi and Bruce from? Bruce Spring Springsteen. I don't know. I don't know where they're from. Uh, New Jersey. Okay. Not Jersey, but New Jersey. Oh, that's probably quite a good state, isn't it? Now, my geography of America is pretty appalling, so do not laugh. But New Jersey, that is New York, right? Now, if I've got this wrong, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. And oh, that's a good joke, Andy is Yoda. Laugh my ass off. No, okay. <laughs> I, I would have thought there'd be more. That's what I was thinking. That can't be. Well, they both got new in the title. I don't know. I don't live in America. You know, I've never, I've never been. So you know, I apologise for my ignorance of, uh, of, um, of anything to do with where New Jersey is. We are in a separate state. Okay, I have to look it up on a map now, won't I? New Jersey is its own state. Well, I thought New York was in New Jersey. That shows you how much, how much I know. So what's but that that is just ridiculous because I'm I'm not they're next to each other. Okay, there you go. I thought they were pretty near. I thought they were pretty near. I thought New York was around there. Okay, I can understand it's its own state, but New Jersey is right next door, right? Is that is that true? Okay. The Giants and Jets play there. Okay. Now I was gonna pretend I don't know what the Giants and Jets are, but we don't really have um we don't really have hockey in England, so I don't know what I didn't know those hockey players. I'm joking, I'm joking. I know they're not hockey. It's uh, something else, isn't it? Basketball or something. One of the, one of the, one of these fake sports, not like football. One of the one of these ridiculous sports. God, I'm gonna get myself. <laughs> I'm, jo I'm joking again. Um, New Jersey is great because Bon Jovi. I think I, I, it's, I think it's very hard to dislike Bon Jovi, isn't it? 
I mean, does anyone dislike Bon Jovi? How how can you actually dislike Bon Jovi? I, I, I'm not sure it's possible. You do? Okay. Right, well, there's always one, isn't there, Pork? There's always one. He is a good person. He, he does seem like a good person, doesn't he? I mean, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say I would willingly listen to a lot of his music, but that's a different thing. That's a different thing. You know, it doesn't matter. Um, it's vanilla ice cream and music. That that's a very good statement. Nine nine tango. Bon Jovi is like soft rock vanilla, yeah, which is all right. But he does have good hair. You are correct there. He has damn good hair. <laughs> And I have to say, Keep the Faith is a pretty good song. It's not a bad song. Um, never, never understand the villa, vanilla slander. Well, that, that's you, you stick up for vanilla. Vanilla is my favourite ice cream as well. So there's nothing wrong with being a, being a bit vanilla. Vanilla. What is vanilla? I really hope the next game starts soon because this is getting ridiculous now. The chat at the moment, but I apologise for for the ridiculous chat. He does have good hair. There you go. Everyone agreeing. Brilliant hair. Uh, but I have a great beard. Well, I have a very ginger beard. But I just, I mean, it's, it's got to its maximum length, really. So why can't it just grow more? If I had one wish, it'd be just put a couple of inches on my beard. What every man wishes for, a couple more inches on their beard. And um, we're still waiting for the next round to start. Save me next round. Save me. Save me. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's a pity because the beard comes here. But my aim, you can see the, the camera shot now. Wouldn't it be beautiful if it just got to a length where you just couldn't see the bottom of it? Oh, we're in. Okay, I'm being saved. Saved by the bell. Okay, good. Let's play some chess. And we're gonna we're gonna now switch it up. So we're playing D4 now. Okay, I'm gonna play the Harry attack. I love this opening. A lot of fun. Very dangerous. It's, it kind of stops the um, what's that one called? The Grunfeld. And there's this very dangerous variation in it. We're into King's Indian defense now, where you could play H4. And there's a very dangerous variation. He'd probably play. Okay, so he's played a a, a vanilla move, preparing one of these guys. Uh, and I'm just preparing now for my H pawn to cause him some trouble. And this is actually quite a positional move. I'm just trying to think. Because their main break in these systems is F5. But by playing here, you, you make this break a little bit more difficult. Now, this is interesting. Now, I could open up the position like this. But let's just see what he's going to do. Is he going to close it down? Because we're going to get a very positional game then. Where I'd love to get this knight into here. But I'm also considering swapping his knight off. Because his bishop could be very bad in some ensuring this positions. It's quite a close structure. So we have a maneuvering positional battle here. Okay. Now... I think we, we're going to now take here and castle queenside. I say I think because I'm not sure. I haven't fallen for a tactic here, followed by bishop f5, have I? Very interesting position. Okay, I'm definitely getting rid of that. That My bishop is not a very good piece in this structure because it's behind my light squares, and it's a light square bishop, so I don't mind exchanging it off. And let's try to complete my development. If he castles, I take here. If he moves his g-pawn, my knight comes in. So, very guarded position at the moment. I don't know, roughly even. I'm trying to wait and see where my opponent puts his king. But he's being very crafty with his manoeuvring. Now, does he want to swap these bishops off? Well, I, I, I don't know if this is correct, but I'm going to stop the bishop coming off. And maybe hint at ideas of moving my bishop to g5. I don't want to swap this knight off now because his bishop will come to life. Maybe I swap his knight off by bringing my knight to this square because that knight is good. Okay, so he's really trying to swap this bishop off. So I'm going to go for some maneuvering where I want to leave him with a bishop versus my knight. 
I'm happy for all the other pieces to come off, but I, I kind of want my knight versus that bishop in the ending. Um, I don't know if that's going to give me an advantage, but I don't think that bishop, it, my, my wall of pawns on light squares might work reasonably well against that. But we have a very tame, tame game so far. And he has to decide where his king's gonna gonna maneuver to. Okay, let's get this rook back sensibly. And I don't know, I think he's played this well. He seem, he seems to have seems to have kept me at bay nicely. Okay, so I said I want my knight against this, but I can't see any good squares to my knight, so I'm gonna try to exchange it and open up this. I don't know if I needed to move my rook back first. This could have been a, um, a little bit too much. And I, I'm now going to try and use this open file. And, and we have a target. Wow, look at that move. That is outrageous. Can he really do such a move? Outrageous move there for my opponent. Now, this is actually quite intriguing. But this must be... I'm just going to gang up against c7. Let's get all the boys over. And again, this is very intriguing, but not quite working. He wants this counterplay here. So here, okay, so let's get the, I mean, taking here, is this, no, it's nothing. Let's go here, b4 ideas and rook c1 ideas. I've just got to watch out for h3. h3 is his counter strike. And if he gets h3, he's going to get some decent play on, on that area of the board because his rook will come in and start hitting me here so so far that is guarded and i think opening up the queen side more will only help me because my queen might be able to get in this way and maybe even i can get a rook to this square so he's played another good move and he's stopping this from occurring okie doke and what next do we have to allow this pawn to come in uh, how about this move because he wants to play queen here now i've got rook a3 i'm stopping this one by leaving my rook here okay so he's now changing plans is it time to try and kill him let's try to kill him queen c6 is and rook a3 I, I don't care about my king side so much. I think I've created enough damage on the queen side to try and put all my eggs over in that queeny side basket. And get the rook to c1 and to try and just come in. So I want to play queen c6 and then bring this one over. So okay, so he's defended very nicely against that. Uh because his king is running here. Nice defense. Stop defending well. It's so annoying when they defend well, right? How dare they? Okay, I'm, I'm going to get too short a time if I think. I need to mix up play on both sides of the board here. So let's try to get rid of this bloody pawn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yes, I know I'm so slow. I wish I wasn't. Oh, let's just come in and go for it, shall we? This move, don't really like it. Intense game. He's played it very well, I feel, so far. So I've gone a bit quiet because I'm not very good when the time gets short. Da, 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 da. Okay, can I get the queens off now? Get my key in. That's what I'm thinking. This should be winning quite easily for me now. 
Oh, thank you very much. That was quite intense, though. I mean, I, I think I was always doing all well there. Maybe doing all right there. Like I said, we need a good second half to this tournament now. So that's put me above 50%. Um, but if I win the next... I, mean, I want to win a four out of four in this little segment. Um, but my opponent defended very well there. I, I thought his position was actually lost. And, and when they fight, when they fight really well, yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? You just expect them to like fold over and die, don't you? It's horrible when opponents play well. It's like, come on, I'm attacking you. Just die. Just die. For goodness sake, just roll over and put your legs in the air. You know, like a dead, you know, dead thing. Um, Thank you for subscribing. Shark Week. And let's just have a look. There probably was some easier way to convert this. And if we go back to this position here, we can see that, yeah, the position's about even. But I don't know if that's necessarily true because... I still feel that my his bishop can never do anything. And I still feel my knight has the potential to do something. Like it has the potential to jump. And when it does jump, I've got this weakness here I can attack. Castling, top choice. Very brave choice. Because it looks like, whoa, hello. Hello, are you going to get checkmated over there, boy? But let's go a little bit further. Around here, did I miss, did I miss some... This, I think Rook C3 was just like a class move. But the computer thinks I don't need to play it. But was there an easier win here? Queen C4. And now he finds a great defense here, yeah? He finds a great defense here. Hello, Jess. How are you doing in the chat? Good to, uh, uh, good to, good to see you in the chat. Yeah, look at that. No blunders, really? That's the first time in my life, frame it, that I've played a game with no blunders. That's That red thing is normally like, like let's just say, a little bit higher. And he finds this great defense, because I'm just threatening to check and bring my rook to a8, checkmate. So he finds this great defense, and now I was thinking about g3, but I couldn't make it work. Let's have a look at it. Because now if I check, his rook defends those area of the boards okay we're in with, we're in with the next game so we really want to win this one obviously that's what it's about and uh, if we win this one let's see if we can get another dutch bloody okay i'm gonna play b6 just the uh, bloody london systems eh because this idea of playing for e5 is quite dangerous for my opponent and this is actually not a bad way to play against the London system to give him something to think about because he's had to divert from his standard London system. And they're all important games. Is my queen misplaced? Well, may, may, maybe, maybe. But am I going to go h6 and g5? Maybe, maybe. I have to watch out for this square then. I'm just thinking out loud about what's happening so he's gone here well h6 seems to me to be a, a perfectly okay move let's see what he's going to do with the bishop so he captures okay now taking with the queen is not ridiculous here because i i mean i'm going to take with a queen because i kind of think that it gives me a little bit easier development and i can keep things guarded with my knight on this square Okay, so he's now threatening stuff over here, which is a little bit annoying. Takes, but let's meet that by aiming to play b5. I don't want his bishop coming there as well. That would be annoying. So I think we should play for b5. My pawn is a little bit loose on b5. Queen a4 is a very good move, actually. Because if I ever castle this way, my knight drops. So I have to play b5, which does loosen my pawn structure over on the... On the queen side because he has a4 later so i don't i don't really want to commit that pawn unless i have to but how else am i gonna i don't want to leave my king in the middle so maybe i go bishop e7 first okay now another good idea his knight is finding a good way through so can we okay i'm gonna play b5 now because he's gone backwards so i want to i want to now play more aggressively than i would have done because at the moment he's a little bit discombobbed 
you late id. So this move is is something which springs to mind, but maybe even c5. Okay, let's go c5. The problem with this is the closing of the position in general favours the side with the two knights because the knights move better in, in closed structures. But who cares? We'll do it anyway. It's too late now, isn't it? Can't go back. Can't go back, right? Got to go forwards. And why am I getting loads of emails all of a sudden coming in? Bloody email box has just gone mental. Uh, okay, doesn't matter. Okay, so do what do we do here? There's a lot of things to think about. Oh, this isn't chess. This one, I like. Got to get this bishop into the game. I don't know if I'm playing c4 or if I'm taking on d4. Take, maybe I'm doing this. Maybe I should have taken. Knight here, my queen slips back. Knight here, I, I whip it off. Complex position, I think. I think. You, you probably would agree here because there's lots of different pawn moves I can play and, and which one do I which one do I want to play I don't know okay now do we close or do we keep it open again this is a really hard decision maybe we keep it open I don't know but I've just realized he's got f4 coming, which scares me. Okay, so I'm going to play this move with the idea we can maybe take that pawn. But you know what? I'm such a wimp. I'm going to get castled first because I don't like leaving my king in the middle. More importantly, the reason I played this was just to give my queen the square, which I can now do immediately. And that does pressurize the knight. Okay, now can we... We want to get rid of this weak pawn. He's going to move his king here next move. There, takes, takes. Queen takes. Okay, can we do this? Can we do this? It's a bit risky because I haven't castled. But I want to get rid of that weak pawn. A castle in queenside is incredibly risky. But if he takes, I want to take. And hope I haven't blundered. I was a bit scared. I just need this one move at the right time. But that pawn break, positionally speaking, was good for two reasons. Number one, I get rid of my weakness, my weak pawn. And number two, I open up the diagonals for my bishops. Bishops work well in open lines. This is keeping his bishop tied down. This move, shit, this move kind of scares me. But my king is safe on h7. I've got Rook coming here next. My Rook's dominating those open open files in, in the middle of the board. And he's got... It, it might look like he... I think I've got a very, very pleasant advantage here. Okay, so now we will, of course, attack. My Queen now should move, right? Uh, as, as it could get hit in that position. Uh, right, let's... Try not to blunder now, Simon. Try not to blunder. Okay, take. Queen coming in seems so natural. But I think I'm just going to do this first. So my king has a nice square coming forwards. Now he's trying... Okay. Trying to get an ending. He's defending very well. Always a little bit frustrating when that happens. Do we maneuver this bishop around to a better square? Okay. Happy to get rid of the opposite colour bishops. And we've got to try to grind this ending out now. And the queens are coming off, which must be good news for me. Because I've got the extra pawn. That's a little bit risky, that move. Because I could get in Zugzwang. And I don't want to get in Zugzwang. So, are we winning this ending? His king's got to retreat now. I 
this is what I'm thinking about. Oh, now it's e easily winning now. He had to play king f2. But surely this is easily... Yeah, this is easily winning now. Because uh, he had to go for my f-pawn in that position. Uh, let's just make sure we don't... Okay, we're, we're a bit quick here. And there's not anything to worry about. I'm going to play it... Oh, I was going to say I was going to play it very safe, but... Let's promote to a rook with checkmate there. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay, well, that's nice. That was nice. I mean, I, I think that ending was that ending was pretty pretty winning, right? I mean, it was it was all right. Um, so we won. We you know we won two in this little segment. So we're on four out of six. And I always say that the 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 score to get to is like you, you know you can get to six out of eight, you, you're flying. So let we've got to win the next two now. Got to win the next two. Thank you the kind comments plays chess at work has been has been subscribed for 50 months wow this is to you play play chess at play chess at work that's a long time 50 months 50 months well spent i would say <laughs> um hello Ca yeah captain bumratty i hope you're doing all right you, you still off you still off the juice at the moment i mean you can't be around christmas time right you had to have you had to have a a crafty shandy you have to have a crafty shandy around Christmas, right? I'm sure you must have. Um, so, um, well, that, thank you, Place Chess at Work. You, it's nice to have people who subscribe into the channel and, you know, uh, give a little bit of support. We all need a little bit of support, don't we? You fell off the wagon on the 23rd of December. Okay, right, now we've got a very tough game here. Who are we playing? Do I what what opening move do I go for? Let, let's let's go for d4. Big game here against a strong grandmaster. Um, hello, blunderbuss. Uh, okay, now this move, this move has been this move is a very interesting way to play against the Dutch. Um, now I wish I, I I don't know what happens next, but the king looks quite weak. And I'm just going to develop my pieces and castle. I remember this F3 move, and no one plays it. It's a very interesting way to face the Dutch. So we're going we're to have a very exciting game here, obviously, because we've already sacked a pawn. And the whole point of this is you, you try and make his life a little bit tricky by um, obviously uh, making castling hard for him. Now, I don't... I, sorry, I'm, I'm thinking while, while this is going on, and I'm gonna. I'm very happy to give up another pawn if if the need be, and it's a very complex scenario. So we take here. I don't mind losing these pawns. That's not the issue. It's like how do we keep the initiative going? Bishop here, knight g6. Bishop here, g5. After that, looks very interesting. Or do we play here? Pawn takes, knight takes here, bishop takes, bishop takes, oh god it's getting complicated. Uh, and he's coming out here next move, this is the problem. Actually this is the problem isn't it? That's the problem. And he's going to get castled and we don't want that. Okay I think I have to keep attacking things. And I don't want him to castle but... I, I think he's going to get castled here, unfortunately. So he's navigated the opening very well so far. Now we can grab another pawn, and I've got to try and find a solution if he does that. This is also possible, but I thought he's, he maybe weakens his king a little bit by doing this. So I thought this is just a mess now. I'm only one pawn down. That's not serious. Okay. Now again, there's a lot to think about. I could grab a pawn here. Takes and takes here. But we want something a little bit... If I go here, he goes c6 though. But where is he going to go? Okay, let's do it. Yeah, and now I would just want to get 
see, I'm, I'm still trying to see where he's going to put his king. I know I'm two central pawns down. It, it, it's probably not enough. But it's kind of weird. It's a very complex and weird position. Because his king still strikes me as being weaker than mine. I, I've done this move so my knight can move and my queen can maybe come over to this area of the board. Now obviously if I take here, he can take here pretty much with checkmate. So we're not in a rush to take this bishop. But if he castles, I will take the bishop because his rook moves away. If he castles queenside, which he, he might well be trying to do now. So let's continue with this plan here. Um, at least line, I, you know, I, I've got to keep the pressure up and try to stop him from castling. Or at least, you know, give him something to think about if he does castle. Very weird very weird scenario so let's say queen here and he's going to castle next move can we keep up any pressure i mean bishop b3 not completely stupid because or maybe knight here then do we grab this one it's, it's, chess is hard right but i kind of also want to take here Chess is hard. I don't know if this is the right way to go, but can I be brave? This could go horribly wrong, right, guys? But it's a story of story of uh, <laughs> story of chess. Now this one is the problem, right? And my knight comes back. He comes check. And I could be getting in I could be getting in trouble here. But we've got to keep trying this. It's a check. Okay. Queen F2. If he goes E3, I have rookie one. Maybe. Really hard to work this position out extremely hard rookie one well i feel is right okay now what about i try to turn the tack around on oh, no, its check okay i have to move the qu okay queen here and now we try to give the material back and start our own attack spent a bit too much time and maybe just simply moving the knight somewhere was was a better move there. But his king looks exposed to me. So I take, I go rook here, king here. And I haven't got a lot of time. We know how bad I am when I get short of time. Okay, we'll do this anyway. Fuck a duck. Have I just fallen into something horrible i missed this one how can i miss such a simple move i've got queen f5 but this is no good I've got no checks ah i just fell into that and it's gonna be mate now there's not much i can do there ah dear just that one little slip again i get a bit short of time i mean well played bastard Let's just have a look. That that was it was just uh, maybe I'm in trouble here anyway. But Queen F four maybe okay. Is there any move I have here? Okay, I have to come this way. So if he does play Queen here, then I can swap the Queens off. Exciting game, exciting game. But I, he 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 didn't quite seem I got enough from the opening. Let's go all the way back. I'll let you guys have a look at what the computer says. So, oh, hello. Um, and let's just see if we missed anything better. So, okay, it was a crazy game. I mean, I know the computer thinks I'm worse. Probably shouldn't be playing these. I mean, if we win the next game, it's still all right. We're still on a good score. We can still finish the tournament well. But what's happening here okay he has played this well he's played you know he's keeping an advantage this move looked interesting 
but maybe it's just bad. Maybe I need to keep this one open. I think in the past here, I, I, I have just played a move like bishop e3, but it may be not impressing. You know, he played, he played the opening exceptionally well. And e6, really good move. And I'm, I'm certainly in trouble now, but it gets a little bit more interesting later on, right? So I feel around here, the computer thinks I'm completely lost. That's surprising, actually. I thought I, I, I was getting a bit more confident at this moment here, thinking that, okay, this is, he hasn't castled, the, his king is going to be weak, but it might just be that my opponent played a very good game and that I was always worse. So I played the best move here as well and um if i don't grab the piece i don't see my compensation so we do this and let's just see uh, maybe i'm it looks like i could just be worse all, all the way through this so we can't really complain if, if if your opponent plays well and you're not throwing away the win this is probably the only game where uh, i was a little bit bad from start to finish and i think as someone said in the chat his e3 pawn did prove to be too much but again around here it looks quite interesting this move d4 and he is castling next move so computer recommends i i swap the queens off but didn't want to give back my piece so yeah this is it was never never that good for me was it just keeping an eye on that bloody minus minus this minus that this is actually my best chance to go 92 where i've had the best evaluation for the whole game uh, so if we put it on the graph let's have a little look on the graph it will tell us that I bet my opponent played a fantastic game so you know well it says 80 percent but I, I think that's a little bit unfair I think he, 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 he did better than that and you can see all the way along you know after move four <laughs> with the white pieces I did say this was an interesting gambit idea I still think it is but after move four with the, with the white pieces, I'm always worse. Maybe maybe I, maybe I should find another way to play against the, the Dutch. It's interesting, but I, I, I didn't really handle the complications that well, did I? Okay, back. So this, anyway, let, let's do it. Um, this, is, uh, this is a very important game because if we win here, we're in five out of eight with three rounds to go. We can still get a tremendous score. If we get a run going so we're going to go back to an opening which has done pretty well now this move I this move was this is actually a very underrated move i think it's called the leaven fish attack or something uh and he's trying to he's trying to kill me with this move and i wish i would remember how to deal with this okay let's try to let's try to cover that one and get castled okay i'm 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 a lot happier now i'm castled i'm a lot happier he's gone queenside we saw some very interesting encounters you get very, I mean, queenside castling is going to be a fun game. That's all we want. And he's going for that area of the board. So a6 here. Or do we play here straight away? Let's play here straight away. Threaten, maybe threaten a pawn. He defends that inadvertently. He's also thinking about getting this guy here. Okay, good move from my opponent because he might take, take and come here, which is annoying. And don't feel like I want to play e6. I don't want to play that move. So how do we do this? Okay, I'm going to play... Uh, my queen is on a shite square. Okay, well, let's move it then. Let's move it somewhere a bit more aggressive. don't know why I put it there. Let's go over here where we can dream. We can dream of actually doing something on, on the king side. And this could be a hidden threat later on. Um, I suppose the good thing about, you know, my title Tuesdays is, okay, the, game, the games are not always particularly brilliant. But we get some bloody interesting games, don't we? Now, can I sack a piece here and take here? Probably not, is the answer. Do we have to play something very slow and get the rook in? Should we try this manoeuvre that we did last time? Okay, if he moves the knight, I take there. So I'm going to get the rook in first. I say very slowly. And now 
I'm gonna, I can't not take this one and sack a piece. I can't not do this. I have to sacrifice a piece and go in. Threatening checkmate. And this is actually very dangerous. I've got a beautiful idea on oh, knight b3. He stops it. Some... Oh, okay. Takes and takes on c3. Uh, check. No. Takes. Rook takes. Takes. Okay. What about this? Uh, I don't want to get short time more more short on time because I'm very bad when I get really low. This was this was a very good move. Okay, so now now I can play this. I'm not sure how this actually helped him because surely now when I'm taking here it's scary for him. No, what do I take with? I can take this. Okay, what about this move? Boom! I don't know if it works, but I can take the knight with check. If he takes my rook, uh, takes, check here, check here, check here, check, and I can't. I I, I haven't been bothered counting material, but that must be all right. Yeah, that must be all right for me. Getting something like that going. Um, and I can also obviously go just simply knight takes. Did I have something better? Maybe, maybe. But we want to keep going forwards and keep the attack going. Simple threat is queen takes b two. So, what's the best move after? Okay, so he's come in, but there's no threat. Let's start by this one, yeah? Can't be a bad move, taking it with check. Now, Rook here, he takes my bishop. You've got to be a mate there, surely. Or do we just play a simple move like this? Again, a bit short of time. Maybe Rook here was the way to win. I'm not sure. I want to. I want to take on C two and keep keep chasing the king. Um, which he defends. And now I don't have this move available, but it must be winning. But <laughs> okay, I've got to play quick. I want to get my queen back in now. Queen wants to come here, and it does. And I can win his queen with rookie five, maybe. Because his, but do I have anything better? I mean, I can take here first. At the same time, rookie five is my idea because his king has to come into the e file, and. We keep chasing it. Probably I, I missed something simpler, but do I even take here and play for more? Let's play for more. Let's not try to win his queen. Let's try to win everything. And this does win everything. We might get a knight checkmate on the board. Every single piece is attacking. Okay. He's playing for tricks. And as long as I don't do anything stupid, it is me playing, so... When I say as long as I don't do anything stupid, don't hold your breath because the stupid of them is me. And um, I'd love to finish by chasing his king. Come on, let's chase that kingy. Come on, come to daddy, come to daddy, come to daddy. I want your soul. Anyone know the song? And Rook there, here we go. Put it in your pipe and smoke it, my friend. Yeah. Anyone know the song? Come to daddy. Come to daddy. Aphex Twins. Oh, of course then, monkey. I, 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 do, I have sung it before. Should be, should be, yeah. Uh, it should be used to a little bit of Aphex Twins in the house. Well, that was kind of fun, wasn't it? We had a, we had a little bit of, uh, we had a little bit of a run going on there. And we had a little bit of king chasing in the house. Now I I don't know. Let's let's just see. So there's another little break now. I think it's round eight. So uh, I'll just show you the tournament scores to start with on the doors. Whatever. Here we go. How do we go? Standings. There we are. Uh, so I'm not going to win the tournament clearly, but we're on five points out of eight games, and there's three more to go. So if we win the last three, you never know. We could get to eight points. Now eight points out of eleven is um, is like one of my best scores. Because I'm not one of the strongest uh, 
players in the tournament, but I do like attacking. That is my, you know, give me a king and I will come to daddy. It's like my turkey. The king is like my Christmas turkey. And you know what it might be time for? It's time for a little ginger shot. Come on, ginger shot. We're gonna we're gonna get the power play in motion. This is it's like one of those computer games where you have to get the ma is it the, the the magic shot or the health. This is like the red potion. Maybe the maybe the blue potion, the magic potion. You know, we got we've got this okay. There we go, the magic potion is down. Lovely. Ah, it tastes horrible that ginger. Ugh. No one likes ginger, surely. Disgusting. Ugh. Okay, we're going to look at the scores everyone's doing at the end of the tournament, but um, let's have a look at that game because it was quite fun, right? It was, well, I enjoyed it. Always enjoy a bit of checkmate. Now, around about here, it did seem like I have a major attack. This is this is this has worked so well, hasn't it? In in the Sicilian taking this thing off here has uh, has worked so well that is actually a good uh, sponsorship opportunity isn't it ginger ginger shot i don't think i'm well known enough to start going for any ginger sponsorship unfortunately i'll, I'll, I'll hold out until my ginger beer sponsorship comes through i'd much rather be sponsored by some ginger beer okay so knight a4 good move and now he goes here and we simply capture and he can't take with a pawn because my bishop actually comes here and it will be pretty much checkmate so he has to take here and now maybe i should have done something else but there's a couple of winning moves and they both involve taking here right but because we had memories of that other game rook takes c3 is such a nice move to play Bring it in, forwards, in we come. In like our friend Errol. Hey, how you doing Lula? Are you right? Thank you so much for the raid, thank you. You came at the right time. I've just had my shot of ginger and um, we've got three rounds of title Tuesday left. So hello to everyone who's been watching um, the brilliant Lula and her stream. Thank you for joining, joining us over here. We're playing chess.com's title Tuesday competition and we are on five points out of eight, which is for me a pretty good score. But every game has been uh, very entertaining, which is really cool. Thank you for the good luck, Lula. I hope you had a good Christmas as well. Do you have a good Christmas? I hope everyone had a good Christmas, but how was your Christmas, Lula? Lots of food, lots of lots of drink, lots of merriment. Um, it was yeah my, my, mine was all right it was uh you know pretty pretty chilled but it was okay yeah all good and um just sort of recovering at the moment getting back into the swing of things with a bit of chess and we're, we're on the same team now as well we're like teamchess.com <laughs> so as if you didn't know you're watching this like chess.com had just brought out basically play magnus which is like chess 24 like all those guys so now uh i'm basically mr chess.com again i was mr chess.com then i was mr chess 24 and then on chess 20 chess.com which is good i've always enjoyed i've always enjoyed working with chess.com because they they whatever people say uh and generally i mean generally like people love lead chess because it's free but there's so many positives for chess.com as well so it's good to be back on the same team and i saw your thing about commentating lula maybe we should commentate together one day on something that'd be quite fun I reckon we'll get some commentary in. Maybe, maybe old Danny Wrench, you listening, Danny? You can sort it out. Let's go back to the game and we'll just see how this finished. So the idea of rook takes c3 was that if my opponent takes here, then I can do this like little windmill. Have you seen the windmill checkmate? We well, no check. So you go here, the king goes here, we go here, check, the king has to come back, and then we go here, check, the king has to come forwards, and now we go, thank you very much. Yummy. We take that one with check. And this must be good. Um, because my opponent's king is so weak. Maybe my opponent should have tried that. But after queen e7, there might have been a quicker way to win here. But I couldn't see it. Okay, this must be right. 
And now rook, where, where's the easiest win? Well, okay, the bishop came here because I want to go rook takes c2 uh, and checkmate like that. My opponent defends that one. And now this is probably a good move because I unleashed the queen and we can chase that king a little bit more. And now we just got to chase that king. Now I can win the queen, but what's better than winning the queen? Winning the king. And that king is just like, it, it, you know, it's an embarrassment. It's, it's naked, it's running around, it needs to put some clothes on. You know, it's gonna it's gonna get in trouble. And yeah, here we can just obviously uh, chase it until it's checkmate. And we might as well just show a checkmate because it's very rare we can get a checkmate on the board. On the board. Oof, okay. Uh, so let's go let's go back and just see who the top scores are. So um so Benjamin who I played in round two, another great streamer, is, is like rocking it on seven out of eight, which is cool. So good luck to Benjamin. I, I like to see him do like to see him win it, I think, today, this title Tuesday. There's three rounds to go. And um you have to scroll down a little bit too far to see where I am, but we're on we're on a plus score, which is alright. And uh, how are you all doing in the chat still? So we just wait for the next game. We're trying to keep this little role going. Yeah, it would be it would be cool to commentate Lula definitely. Uh, and I think there's a lot of I think it'd be really good to uh, mix up the teams the commentary sometimes because generally you have like just like GMs commentating grandmasters, uh, and even though people seem to love that, um, I'm always a little bit I'm always like you remember who remembers that story? I don't know if it's a story from the bible probably not it's more of a like of the emperor's new clothes and you know that story where there's this emperor of a kingdom and, and um he's like you know real flash and basically he he, he says to all his uh, minions i've got this amazing outfit someone sells it to him like a wizard or some shit like that sells him this like outfit and says you want this kingy and it's actually like an outfit of like nothing. Hans Christian Andersen, that, that sounds about right. And it's actually nothing in the king. And the, the, the geezer who sells it to him, this wizard, basically says like, you know, if you, can, if you can't see this, then you're an idiot. So only really clever people can see this outfit. I might be changing the story, but this is how I remember it. And everyone's like, oh yeah, I see the outfit. So the king wears this outfit, but actually he's walking around naked. And everyone's like, look how, oh, look at that brilliant outfit. And they're all lying to each other. Is that basically how it goes? And sometimes, um, sometimes commentary reminds me of that. I watch commentary of some of the really top guys, you know, uh, and I don't always follow it because it's so hard to follow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I watch the real top, you know, really top players and I'm like, oh my God, they're too quick. And everyone in the chat's going, oh yeah, amazing. Oh yeah, I, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant variation that. Yeah, really good. But I actually think that a lot of people watching the commentary, they don't understand a thing. <laughs> because if I can't understand some of the commentary, how can, how can people who are low rated to me? And I'm thinking like, do people really understand this? And like, I'm like, oh my God. So I, I think it's like really good to have a combination of commentators. So I think having grandmasters is really good and brilliant but i think it also why not have um why not have people who, who haven't played for too long like you know like lula combined with the grandmaster you know i think that'd be really good because like you know you get that level where a lot of people are at and, and you get also the grandmaster views as well you know and, and keep it simple obviously you can have different la layers of com of commentary so i see someone saying you've got like uh you know, Liko and Tanya, brilliant, you know, and also you've got really good, you know, you've got two, put two top grandmasters together, you've got the high level commentary, but then you get um, uh, like other commentators, basically. Anyway, I've got, I've got to play chess again now, and this guy's pretty good, isn't it? Borchnik, he's really quite strong, this guy. I mean, he's, he's 2990, he's a proper player, isn't he? And he's playing, he's playing the black line against me. Okay, now I know this is actually quite an annoying way to play uh, the black against this, but I've got to, I've got to think um, because I I obviously did a chessboard course on this opening from the white side, and, and I've got to think what I recommended. <laughs> and my memory again, it's like a sieve nowadays. It really is. I think I recommended B five there, a bit more spicy. So let's just play normal moves. 
and wait until I blunder for at least a little bit. Um, I've got a bit more space. I quite like my setup. My knight can come here. This is why you play this. Uh, and I think this is a pretty decent setup that I'm playing. Let's plonk the knight there and see what he's going to do. If he castles, I will whip that one off and say, Thank you very much, my friend. Uh, that's supposed to be a James Bond voice, but probably didn't quite pull that off, did I? And my king seems to be safer than his as well in, in such a structure. Um, and let's just see where he's going to go with his king. Because he can't go this way, so I assume he's going to go this way. And I want to keep it closed over here for now. He's going to have to play f6, but this comes with it risk. He has gone this way, and I really want to play this move. But something inside me says don't sing, because you can't. Oh, can I play that move? Something inside of me says, no, don't do it. You're playing someone too strong. You are actually just being a, an idiot. So I'm going to play here first. And he has played this. And now I've lost my opportunity to do it. And I'm thinking like, yeah, okay, maybe I should have done it. Maybe I should have. But, you know, we're not all, we're not all bloody 2,800 miracle workers, are we? Um, and... I still like my position, but I'm getting confused. Now, can I play here now anyway? Or, or, oh, God. I hate it when I have to think that. I'm thinking is so hard. Do we take here and open it up? What do I do, people? What do I do? Um, I'm getting very confused about this position. It should be good for me. I'm spending far too much time. Uh, I'm getting so confused. Okay, I don't know. I'm going to take here. That is maybe... Because I want to put my knight here and take with the queen. Should have had a good move there, though. Okay, well, let's continue. We said A, so we might as well do B. And let's just plonk it in. And I really kind of want to go here as well, you know. Um... So why not? Why not? Why not? If you want to do something, just do it, I think. As long as it doesn't hurt anyone else. And let's just keep going forwards. And yes, I, I predicted you might do that. Where do we put you? Let's put you there, shall we? And how is this position, do we think? It's weird, isn't it? This is a weird position very weird position we're taking I have to take with Harry and he's got the two bishops but I kind of like this plonky plonky pawns that's a very technical term plonky plonky pawns it's like, but I, I am also rather annoyed with myself that I did not sacrifice a piece earlier I'd love to get my bishop here. That would be a really sexy thing to do. God, I can't believe I get so excited about weird ideas. <laughs> if he goes here, will I just come back? I mean, I'm not too worried about that. I mean, I, 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 again, coming forwards would be what a brave player does. But I don't think it... Oh, it does... Oh, okay, so we, we should take with a queen, right? Because it's a check. And let's just... Let's just stop that bishop having any, you know, doing anything down there. Because we, we don't like bishops doing doing things to us. I said, we saw what happened to the Catholic Church, didn't we? Um, and now, okay, he's taken that. He's not supposed to take that. I didn't, okay, I don't really want to bring my queen over there. But... What else to do, you know? Um, maybe put the. I mean, it's, it's probably still alright, isn't it? This is still alright, but he's got his pieces to pretty decent squares, and he's kind of waiting to see what I'm going to do. Now, I do like the coordination of my position that little bit better. I feel. Now he's trying to tempt me to play something, which I'm probably going to play because. 
you know, because I just am. Oh, I mean, how can you not? Okay, I'm going to play this because what am I missing here? I'm kind of like really skeptical about playing such an obvious move because you're playing someone so strong. And you're like, what have I missed? I've clearly missed something because strong players, they don't make mistakes. And this is probably what I missed. Is it? I don't know. Let's keep trying. Let's keep trying to do things to him. Oh, fucking hell. Bastard. <laughs> oh, how could I blunder like that, you muppet? Okay, that was ridiculous. All that hard work to get what is probably a good position, and you play a move like that? What is wrong with you, Squire? What is wrong with you? And I think, I think again, it just kind of shows the difference between these guys and, and me that he just can't make these mistakes like this, you know? Um, and, well, I mean, obviously, I'm, he's not going to go drawing. And uh, Can we trap his queen? Nearly. Well, I've seemed to have blundered a lot of pieces. That's enough of that. How many pieces can you blunder? It don't really... Uh, I'm not resigning in time as well. <laughs> that did hurt. Just drop that. His queen. That one little queen caused me so much pain in what should be a good position. I just like, yeah, it was just... So I, I certainly was doing very well most of the game, as usual. But just blundering. That, that hurt me more than it hurt you, Captain Bumray. Don't worry about that. It, 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 it hurt me more. Okay, I don't want to see that position. Let's go back when things were a little bit better. Let's go back when things are a little bit better, please. Um, so around here, I'm, I'm doing well. I'm definitely doing well. And this pawn structure is, is very pleasant. And this, this must be really, really good. But I, when his queen came in, I just, I just, again, felt the time ticking and didn't handle it very well. So let's get to that part. So I, I'm doing, this is all okay. This is all still much better for me. This is an okay move. His pawns are very bad. I've still got like a pawn advantage playing well so far. And then he starts to do these annoying little moves and I just totally lose control. Um, I was thinking Bishop D5, Lawrence, actually. And, and I, I, I convinced myself not to play it. And why did I convince myself not to play this now? I, I, why didn't, I was going to play Queen here, but then I saw Rook takes F4. So bishop here is it, yeah this is the, why didn't I play that it's so simple and this would have this would have certainly been a major advantage for me actually because he has to now this is what I want I thought I was getting the same thing by putting my rook here but at the same time defending this so that was uh that was that was the mistake I really want to exchange queens because if you look at these two pieces they're kind of dead you know he's he's got the he's got these my pawns control them and also, when this pawn comes to e6, it's going to be so strong. Um, so, bishop d5, you're completely correct, Lawrence. Just a, just a good move. And um, just basically, I, I would be very confident when the queens come off of winning this against most players, well, everyone in the world. Because it's very hard to go wrong in this position. And it's really hard to blunder here. There's so many so many ways you can... You can uh, you can try to win this, right? My bishop defends this magnificently. And I've got f5 at the right moment coming through. Tremendous position. So that, that again, just a little a little miss here. And rook e4, uh, I, just, I just totally forgot now. I mean, e6 is clearly my idea. But I, I'm not, I totally forgot that my rook has stepped away from defense of, of the knight here. And now, now things are, are far from clear because... Um, He's, he's weaved his way in and I mean maybe this is a draw is this a draw no it's not a draw because he can come to g4 so check here and now he comes to g4 right so that 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 was my one chance so um I mean it wasn't a bad game but as always when you play these guys you, you can't you have to take all your chances it's so hard 
you know you play one slightly bad move that's it you won't get back in but we can still get to seven points we we really want to win these last two rounds seven points is a good score so let's rely on the dutch defense i normally play knight c6 there but i'm just going to play something a little bit different and um playing probably a russian player here and this position normally they play knight c3 then i play this idea of playing c5 uh, and the point of this is i, I want to try and, and hold off their d4 break and i i i have had some interesting games in this but there's there's one slight problem with this and that is if they play bishop h3 bishop h3 is a move a bastard sort of bastard played it which is quite difficult because i don't want to take here because when they take back with a pawn you get a massive hole here and i can't again recall what white should do but it might be yeah i think he's playing all the right ideas and the problem is he has a queen check over here so can i can I play this or am I, have I gone completely bonkers now? And the point is I'm stopping the queen coming here. And now I want to take here. I don't have to worry about knight here because I don't know. I don't know. It, look, it looks it looks like I'm doing something rather wrong here. And he plays what should be a good move. Because um, he wants this square for the knight. He's playing very well actually. So bishop takes bishop. Okay, I think I have to. And we've got queen f6. And he's got queen f3. Fuck. So this move, this move is after he takes my bishop is a real issue. So takes, takes, knight here. I was hoping queen f6, but then he has queen here. Well, he didn't play the critical move. And I'm still worried about this. So can I can I give this up somehow? Takes takes knight takes and sack for no that doesn't clearly work knight here takes takes I'm not sure this move is still scaring me but he's got other options in this position as well the opening has not been a success he's played exactly the line why i gave up this variation <laughs> which has always been annoying when they play they play the the reason you gave it up but i think his i think his queen should have been keeping the f3 square now i'm a little bit I'll say a little bit because I'm still I'm still a little bit scared but I feel I feel better now because if I can get my king over here happy days uh because now then my pawns will look good I'm, I've got only one more piece to develop so this c3 and queen b3 idea can't can't be correct way for him to play he should have just gone for the other area of the board now do we play this now or do we castle queens uh let's castle queen's side am I falling into anything well there's only one way to find out and next move knight f6 will complete development so if we get that in it is certainly a fonzie position sunday monday happy days okay what's he doing to me over here what is he doing is he doing anything this is nothing this is maybe a move but i can't do much about it so i can't see a threat what am i missing am i missing something again i've got to develop i might be missing something but let's just keep developing okay knight takes he takes there i have to take my queen now b4 might be a move but it's going to be very risky for him and now i've got f4 as a counter try and f4 now this is a move I, I i mean i've got to just calculate right knight comes here and then queen here knight. okay i'm gonna play oh no his queen defends it so don't be stupid don't be stupid yeah i mean even then it's quite interesting but let's just play safe let's just come back here don't need to push those pawns yet i've got a bigger pawn center and his king to my eyes it looks quite unsafe very annoying with his moves this guy though he keeps finding moves which is just annoying getting under a minute this is where panic sets in so i'm going to start moving a bit quicker okay now i don't know if i should be taking here but i see an open line i see his king so let's just let's just aim for the king knight here he takes here we check 
So where does my knight want to head? How about this weird square? Something funny about that move, but I've, every tempo is so important. And this gains a tempo. I couldn't go to there because he checks and takes that one. And again, every tempo is so important. So I've got to now prove that my pawn sacrifice has some validity. I really struggle to get that word out. Validity. Validity. And of course, I want to just get my rook here and I think that's what I want to play next. Somehow get in. Okay, well now this move those knights back back towards his king. And very interesting position where we're both getting short of time and I'm sure we both wish we had more time here. I'm gonna line all my pieces up where they look pretty decent. I've got a fret taking the pawn. So he's come back and obviously we do not want to draw. Can we check here? Maybe, I haven't got time to think of options. Don't want to swap queens though, but Fuck, we are swapping queens. There's no funky shit, is there? Oh no, bastard. This one? That is the move. It took me a while to find that one. Can't take it because he takes there, damn it. Oh. Yes, I saw this, you bastard. Yes, and this is very annoying. Ah, oh, dear. And. Oh, it was going so well. I just missed a couple of little ideas at the end there. And, well, I mean, unless he freezes or something, there's not much can be done here, of course. But he's got two seconds, so we will fight it out a little bit. Yeah, the end is nigh and oh that was very annoying because it's kind of right I just can't play when i get short time oh we've got one second there's no point flagging him but yeah i was maybe trying too much there getting a bit too clever um and i've got my pieces a bit wrapped up so this is this is probably where it's pretty critical uh, and the position you know i think around about even is okay he can't flag when they're getting one second of move added on and it was getting too depressing there anyway <laughs> so this is sorry i went here he went here and this is where i started to play some stupid moves because knight f3 is just a flash move when you've got like your time's getting a bit short you're starting to panic and it's just a, i kind of knew it was a bad move at the time because I'm allowing this bishop to open up and I don't need to do it. I just put my queen anywhere else and keep the frets alive. So even, I mean, even like I like, I know it might be a better move, but let's just move the queen somewhere where it's very safe. And now I'm threatening to move this knight and unleash my rooks and everything's getting very ready for his king. So knight f3, terrible move, really bad move. I wanted to get my rook in here with check after king comes to c2. But I started to get very confused now after king to this square. I'm still doing well, but I'm just uh, uh, basically, I'm just losing a lot of time. And it took me ages to find queen here. The idea of this, he has to take here. And now, and now I, I, again, I'm missing quite obvious moves. Knight g4, what a move that would have been here. What a move. For example, knight g4 and it makes a lot of sense to a lot of my pieces. And his king is, is looking, again, this would have probably won the game for me, but we didn't play that one. We went in with a check. And I think after this, there's not really much I can do. And I got scared by this. I couldn't find a good move here with 14 seconds and uh, just crumbled here really. Uh, after this position, again, knight here to e3 is winning. Still missing some winning ideas here. Incredible. Incredible there. So let's, I'll show you. Had I gone here, it's still actually winning. Because bishop takes here. We go knight e3. Threatening checkmate. 
And when he goes knight d2, we just take his queen there. So queen e3, another panic move. And there's no, no coming back from this now. His king is, is nicely defended. So we're into the last round and we're only on 50%. Another not very impressive time Tuesday. But again, we're getting some very interesting games. And the games are all very close, I think. Even against the top guys, they've been very, very close. But as you say, small margins, small margins are letting us down. So we're trying to have a fun last game to get into a positive score. Um, and before we do that, let's just have a look who's leading the competition. Well, we have Joss Pem, who is a very strong player. I think I'm sure he's won this tournament before. Right at the top. And okay, we're in with the we're in with the last game anyway. So let's let's see if we can at least finish on a high. And we're playing a woman Fide Master from Saint Kitts and Nevis. Where's that? Bermuda, is that right? Maybe Bermuda. Maybe Bermuda. Well we're getting Dutch in. I don't actually oh Saint I should know where that is. Someone tell me. Saint Kitts and Nevis. It must be Bermuda, right? Is that right? near near bermuda okay well you saw my geography earlier how good i am at geography <laughs> i'm not very good at geography so we're going to get our normal dutch in i'm going to stand i'm going to follow the standard practice and that is of taking here and playing a5 and i've had this kind of stuff many times before and the whole point of this variation is you try to get e5 in and we will now be forcing e5 to come in. b4 loses the pawn because I can take the rooks off and take that pawn. And as soon as you get this moving, you're very happy. And I would always say, I would always say that black is slightly better. My opponent is also streaming. Battle of the streamers. Now, I, I'm never sure whether you put the queen here or here. I'll put it here in these positions because sometimes the queen wants to come over here but sometimes your queen wants to cover some squares and um now i had this idea once of playing g5 and this might look like a really aggressive attacking move but the, the main point is actually to kill this bishop can you believe it you want to positionally play these two moves and make it a little bit tricky for white to play f3 because if you can play these two moves, and this is like the perfect scenario, I've had this kind of thing many times before, you kill this bishop. And, and by killing that bishop, it's actually quite a positional opening uh, way to play the middle game. You, you get this space advantage. These pawns are weak in the ending as well. You can start targeting those pawns. And I think black has a very nice advantage in this kind of middle game. And I've won many games actually from from the strategy of stopping white playing f3 white would love to play f3 because this diagonal is brilliant for the bishop but you've killed this bishop and the only way it can come out is to try and do this but there's there's ideas to stop that now taking on pass on you could go for the attack but i'm, I'm gonna again i'm not actually going for checkmate here i'm more going for play on the queen side and and i want to get an ending the endings are very pleasant for black in these positions because it is these two pawns so we're just going to develop and now i can get the ending where do i want to move the knight i don't really want to do this now do i uh, okay can we go here this is a little bit adventurous this king f7 move uh, i want to take here with the king a bit a bit adventurous uh, do I, I mean, I can go knight f3, probably a little bit better, but that changes the pawn structure and allows my opponent to get rid of this bishop. So I might actually just try to bring my knight back. And I think I'm going to do this now and try to get those queens off the board. So my opponent playing well, if she can facilitate the bishop coming to c4, she should be very happy. Um, get rid of that one. And she's, she's doing the right thing. She's keeping the queens on the board. Now, if I go here, she might take that one. I've actually put my king on a stupid square because you want to play king f7 in this position. But we will 
keep going for exchanges and we're going for the ending so let's let's see if we can just swap things off and try to play the ending we haven't had many endings today so let's see if we can get one ending and again i'm not maybe i could have played this more accurately i'm just sort of following a a very standard idea and actually trying to get rid of this bishop so good play and if i come here queen c3 is quite annoying but i have queen d5 so just played this very well and i'm maybe played some rather stupid moves at some point but i still think my position is preferable i've just realized she could have taken there and had i taken on c5 bishop there that would have been very painful and I'd, I'd have lost immediately uh, ha had that occurred so that was a good thing she didn't do that we should be keeping a bit of control here i just really would like to get the queens off now do we keep this pawn on the board or not she's going to try to bring her knight in right so or do we now take the opportunity to go there okay i'm going to go here first but I'm not really not convinced the way I've done this because this knight is very strong on this square. Okay, we're gonna go with the check. Which way do we take? This way or the other way? Let's maybe take this way. And I've got to get my queen to the back rank now. So that's what I'm trying to do, get my queen to the back rank. And it's that pawn mass which is always a problem for her in these uh, these positions. And I'm trying to get my queen to this square, ideally. But she's still defending, keeping this as an idea. And now we could go for the ending, but it doesn't seem to be working very well. And do we play this ending? We could lose that ending as well. Do we try to move the king? Do we try to improve the situation first? Let's see what this ending is like. I'm worried because all my pawns are on light squares and I've got to go for this pawn. But the plus side is look at her king. Her king has absolutely no way to get into the position. Okay, I'm gonna do this as cleverly as I can, meaning I don't wanna lose this pawn. So my king is, the way I'm gonna win this is take this with my king. And let's go for that now. And it looks like we have just about got there in the, in the end. And I, I, don't think there's much hope for her here because this pawn is just is just too much here tough game there another tough game but at least we did finish on a plus score and, and the funny thing is i've won so many games in the dutch just doing that plan uh, basically uh, just following those simple i you know it's very very nice when you get a game like that when you know every stage of the plan all the way through right to the ending of what you should be doing and um you know uh, luckily we're able to do that but she she um, my opponent defended stubbornly and, and she missed a good opportunity um i mean i'm not playing accurately here she could just take on a5 and i forgot that i can't take here which i, I wanted to play because i forgot that bishop e8 wins my queen so that that was the one the one chance but as soon as we got to this ending I think it's completely lost because my opponent's king is trapped out. There's many little endgame problems uh, that white gets in, in, in these positions. So it's just sort of knowing about the Dutch that does the job. Um, and that brings us to the end of Type Tuesday. So it looks like uh, Ferruja is going to win it this time around. Well done, Ferruja. Uh, we finished on 6 out of 11, which is, I think... Um, a pretty average score but um you know uh, not a not a bad score at all and um there's more importantly some very interesting games uh, were played and uh, 
I suppose that's the one thing when, that we try to have when we stream. We try to have at least very interesting uh, games. Mm -hmm.